Hello, good evening, students. After a long back, we again meet on this platform. I think all of you understood the topics which are already discussed in the previous videos about the chapter light. Today, we are going to discuss about the light phenomena, two light phenomena, such as one is dispersion of the light and another one is scattering of the light. So, dispersion. Dispersion is also one of the property of the light. So, fundamentally defined as any white colored ray splitted into seven colors when it is passes through the transparent medium is known as dispersion of the light. This phenomena cannot explained by using the light ray theory, light ray theory, but it can be explained by using the uh, light wave theory. So, according to light wave theory, light is an electromagnetic wave in which no particle vibrates or oscillates forth and back, but the magnitudes of the electric field and magnetic field varies at a very point periodically so that the light wave propagates in all directions. This is the light magnetic wave theory. According to this theory, the velocity of the light is 3 to 10 power 8 meters per second in the vacuum or A. But when any light ray which enters into the transparent medium, the light splits into seven colors and also all those seven colors reaches and chooses least time taken power according to Fermat's rule. Here we got one doubt, we get one doubt that is when the light ray incident on the glass slab at the time no dispersion is occurred but the same light ray incident on the triangular prism it gets dispersion. Why? So first we explain the light ray which incident on the lateral surface of any triangular prism at the time dispersion is occurred. For example, assume that this triangle is a prism. Any light ray which incident on one lateral surface of the prism According to the principle of refraction, any light ray which moves from river to denser, the corresponding refracted ray moves nearer to the normal, moves nearer to the normal. So the original direction of this ray is like this. So it gets a refraction and it is splitted into seven colors. Splitted into seven colors. Here, when the light ray enters into the any transparent medium, the speed of the light changes due to refraction. We have already known that. But the, here, this light ray, white colored light ray, splitted into seven colors means each the light ray, the velocity of all these colored waves depends upon their wavelength. And also, we have already known that the refractive index of the prism, sorry, the refractive index of any transparent medium is the ratio between the velocity of the light in the vacuum to the ratio uh, velocity of the light in that medium. So that here the red light gets less deviation but violet light ray gets more deviation because the wavelength of the red light is more wavelength is denoted by the letter lambda and the wavelength of the violet color is very less. For this reason, all these light rays due to their wavelengths they get less deviation in the red. Here the red color have more wavelength or higher wavelength so that it gets less deviation and violet color has less wavelength so that it gets it gets more deviation uh, red color get red color get less deviation because it has higher wavelength violet color get 
more deviation because it has less wavelength less wavelength on this principle any white colored ray incident on any one lateral surface of the prism it gets a refraction and also in the white white color is a mixture of all colors so that the each color gets different deviations due to the wavelengths here the series of the seven colors is called vip zr or spectrum violet color indigo blue yellow orange green yellow orange red higher wavelength least wavelength least wavelength so that red sorry least wavelength higher highest wavelength in this seven colors series red color has highest wavelength so that it gets less deviation violet color has least wavelength so that it gets more deviation so here we get one doubt that is if any light ray which enters into the glass slab it gets a refraction here it gets first refraction again it gets second second refraction but here when the light ray incident on one surface of the glass slab it gets first refraction again it gets after completion of second refraction it emits only one white color the ray white because here the two surfaces of the prism inclined at a certain angle so that inclined at a certain angle so that the deviation angles of all colors in the light ray from violet color to red color changes that's why after second refraction also after second refraction in the prism the seven colors emitted seven colors emitted and it looks like a red but in the glass slab one any white any white color to the incident on one surface of the <coughs> glass slab it gets a first refraction and it reaches second surface again it gets one more refraction and emitted only one light ray after first refraction it splits into seven colors but here these two surfaces of the glass slab parallel to each other so that the colors all colors of the white color ray doesn't have any change doesn't have any variation in in their deviation angle of deviation or in their deviation angle so that again these all seven colors emits as a white colored ray this is the main reason so when the dispersion is occurred when any light ray incident on one surface of the transparent medium at the second surface those white colored rays split into seven colors after the completion of the second second refraction here we are taking one prism for the explanation of dispersion phenomena here in the prism the two surfaces incline at a certain angle but we have already known that how the refraction is occurred when any light ray incident on one surface of the glass slab here the two surfaces of the glass slab is uh, are parallel to each other so that there is after completion of after completion of first refraction those white colored rays split into seven colors but at the second surface all those seven colors again formed as a one light color one white color ray because of there is no angle of deviation for all colors such as violet indigo blue green yellow orange red so that there is no dispersion occurred in the glass slab so 
white colored light ray splitted into seven colors when it is passes through the any transparent medium is known as dispersion of the light so any white colored ray which enters into the transparent medium when it is dispersed depends upon the their wavelength depends upon the wavelength white color is a mixture of seven colors so here white colored ray enter into the incident on the first surface of the triangular prism is splitted into the seven colors because red color has least wavelength and red color has higher wavelength and violet color has least wavelength so that red color gets less deviation and violet color gets more deviation so mainly dispersion is occurred when the light ray enters into the transparent medium the waves of all those light ray the velocity of the waves of all those light depends upon the wavelength as well as the refractive index of those medium in which it enters that's why dispersion of the light phenomena can be explained by using the electromagnetic wave theory so here is the some questions are there is the speed of the light of each color different is the speed of the light of each color is different the speed of the each color is remains same when the light travels through the vacuum or a but the speed of the light of each color varies when it enters into the any transparent medium because of the speed of the each colored light wave depends upon the wavelength as well as the refractive index of the transparent medium in which it enters that is the answer next why the light splits into the different colors when passes through the prism so when any white colored ray incident on one lateral surface of the triangular prism it's splitted into it's splitted into seven colors again all those seven colors reaches second lateral surface of the triangular prism again the, uh, again after completion of the second refraction all those seven colors emits emits into its surroundings so this is the dispersion why the light splits into different colors because here this light wave whenever incident on one lateral surface of this triangular prism white color ray is the combination of seven colors the velocity of all those colors depends upon their wavelength as well as the refractive index of the triangular prism refractive index means the ratio between velocity of the light in the vacuum to the velocity of the light in that medium what we have taken in this condition so that according to fermat's principle once again any light ray it chooses by itself to take least time taken for so that red color has the highest wavelength but violet color has the least wavelength so that red color gets less deviation but violet color gets more deviation and also when the light ray enters into the triangular prism the two surfaces of the at least the two surfaces of this triangular prism incline at a certain angle so that the angle of deviations from violet color to red color changes so that all those seven colors emits after the second refraction occur at the second surface but when the light ray any any light ray which enters on one surface of the one surface of the <coughs> glass layer it's splitted into seven colors after completion of second refraction again it emits only one light ray because all those light rays parallel to each other so that there is no angle of deviation for all those seven colors that's why dispersion is not occurred when the light ray incident on any one surface of the glass slab okay next here if any one color if 
any one color except white split it into more when causing tropism I think all of you get this out except white color white color is a combination of seven colors okay from this seven colors any one color either white violet or indigo blue green yellow or orange or red any one color to be incident on the one lateral surface of the prism then those color may be split into seven uh, more colors no because the number of light waves emits from any light source per second is known as frequency frequency the frequency is the completely this is the property of the light source the number of light waves emits from any light source per second is known as frequency it is completely belongs to the property of the light source so that when the refraction is occur if any one colored light ray except white incident on any triangular prism after completion of refraction only one colored white ray emits because the frequency what's meant by frequency the number of light waves emits from any light source per second is known as frequency so frequency doesn't change by the refraction it is the completely it is completely property of the light source so that if any one colored white ray incident on any one lateral surface of the triangular prism only same colored light ray emits from the other other lateral surface of those prism okay now so the dispersion phenomena occurred in our real life scenarios in which one is rainbow so rainbow is formed when the rainbow is formed if the raining in the presence of sunlight at that time the rainbow is formed and also we may create rainbow colors if we spray the water by using any water by in the presence of the sunlight at that time also we can see the seven colors of those light in those water droplets so how the rainbow is formed so rainbow is formed on the uh, rainbow is formed depends upon the dispersion of the light phenomena so let us consider formation of a rainbow formation of a rainbow so let us consider a rainbow assume that this this is one rainbow so this is the first surface this is the top surface first surface and this is the second surface of the rainbow if any light ray incidence on the first carbon surface of the raindrop what happened according to dispersion of the light this light ray split it into seven colors here also refraction is occurred any light ray which enters from direct to the corresponding refracted ray moves nearer to the normal if any light ray which moves from denser to the other the corresponding refracted ray moves away to the normal this is the uh, common phenomena of the refraction here this light ray split it into seven colors because of the velocity of all these light uh, colored light rays depends upon their wavelengths so that this light ray split it into seven colors we have already known that the original action is like this yes. 
red color red color as higher wavelength so that it gets less deviation violet color as less wavelength so that it gets more deviation <coughs> the remaining colors between violet and red existing between red and orange violet indigo blue green and yellow orange like this so after faster refraction all these seven colors reaches to the second curved surface of the red because red color has higher wavelength so that it gets less deviation violet color has less wavelength so that it gets more deviation okay when all these light rays reaches to the second curved surface of the raindrop then the incident angles of all these light waves are more than the critical angle of water drop all those light rays gets total internal refraction total internal reflection what's meant by total internal reflection when any light ray passes from denser to rarer if the incidence angle of those light ray is more than the critical angle of those transparent medium at that time those light ray again bounce back into those denser medium this phenomena is called total internal reflection here if the incidence angles at the second surface of the raindrops for all these colors is more than the critical angle of water drop then all these colors all these colors get total internal reflection total internal reflection again all this this is violet color this is red color between violet and red all these colors are exist again all these colors from red to violet reaches first surface of the red drop again here get one more refraction and emits seven colors violet indigo blue green yellow orange red so again after completion of the second refraction of the first curved surface of this raindrop all these seven colors emits like this manner rainbow is formed so rainbow when one colored white colored ray enters into the raindrop on the first curved surface it gets one refraction again at the second curved surface it gets total internal reflection again as the first curved surface it gets again second refraction like this manner rainbow is formed here one important thing to remind this is the ray which enters into the raindrop If you want to see violet color very clearly in the rainbow, 
the angle between the light ray which enters into the raindrop and the angle uh, uh, which enters into the raindrop and which emits from the raindrop is 40 degrees. If we can see the red color very clearly, the angle between the light ray which enters and the light ray which emits from the raindrop is 42 degrees. So that it is very clear that when we can see the any rainbow, the all colors which are formed, the all colors in the rainbow, which are formed between, which can see all colors in the rainbow between from 40 degrees angle to 40 degrees angle to 42 degrees angle. So this is the formation of the rainbow. So in the rainbow, two refractions and one total internal reflection is occur. But and also here also we have to remind one thing: we cannot see the all colors from one raindrop. We can see the uh, we can see the colors of the rainbow from different raindrops, different raindrops. Okay. Next, scattering of the light. It is also one of the property of the light. What is meant by scattering? When it is occurred. So, in our nature, we have so many atoms and molecules, free atoms and free molecules are there. And also, the light ray, which comes from sun or any light source, travels through the, those free atoms and molecules at the time. All those molecules or atoms absorb some light energy and some energy emits in all directions. This is the main common phenomenon of the scattering of the light. So, if any light ray which comes from any light source enters into the atoms or molecules of the medium, at the time, those molecules or atoms, some quantity of light energy from those light rays, again those atoms or molecules or particles emits some light energy, some quantity of light energy in all directions. This is the common phenomenon of scattering. Why all those molecules or atoms or particles of the medium absorb those light energy? So scattering, when the scattering is occurred, scattering is when it is occurred. So scattering is occurred, the wavelength of the light ray or the wavelength of the light wave is comparable to the size of the particle in which it travels, at that time only scattering is occurred. So first of all, any light ray which comes from any light source passes through the particles of the medium at the time the size of the particle is comparable to the wavelength of those light ray then those particle absorbs some quantity of energy from that light ray again yet those particle emits light in all directions for example if you think this is a particle of the medium, any light ray which enters, which incident on this particle, at the time the wavelength of this light wave, the wavelength of this light ray, what is meant by wavelength? The distance between in any electromagnetic wave the distance between two successive crests or two successive crows are known as crows is known as wavelength. Here the wavelength of the light wave is comparable to the size of the particle. Comparable to the size of the particle. At the time this light particle absorbs some light energy from this wave and emits in all directions this phenomenon is known as scattering of the light scattering of the light but here to understand this phenomenon very clearly 
you have already known that in the spectrum the bond of seven colors are called spectrum the gr it has less wavelength or least wavelength or small wavelength it has highest wavelength among all these colors so less wavelength means high frequency high frequency low frequency so for example this is the particle then the this is one particle so one light red for example red color is the higher wavelength It has a higher wavelength. The wavelength, the wavelength of the any color, any light ray is not comparable to the size of the particle in the medium. At that time, scattering is not occurring. At that time, scattering is not occurring. So, when the scattering is occurring, what is meant by scattering? Any light ray which comes from any light source. Incident on the particle of any medium. At that time, the wavelength of the light ray is comparable to the size of those particle. Then those particle absorbs some light energy from that light ray or light wave. Again, those energy emits into all directions. Emits into all directions is known as scattering. Here we are taking one example. We take one small particle. And also, we are trying to incident on one red colored light ray of a particle, but the wavelength of the red colored light ray is high, so that here scattering is not occurring. For example, if you take same size particle, imagine that, and incident one blue colored light ray, blue colored light ray. What happened? The wavelength of the blue color is very low, so that <coughs> here the size of the wavelength of the blue color light ray right, right, is comparable to the size of the particle, so that this particle or molecule or atom of the medium absorbs some energy from this ray and emits in all directions. So this is the scatter. This is the scattering phenomenon. So, <coughs> any light ray which comes from any light source incident on any particle of the medium, at that time the wavelength of those light rays is comparable to the size of the particle. Then those particle absorbs some light energy from that light wave or light ray and emits in all directions. This phenomenon is known as scattering. If the wavelength is not comparable to the size of those particle, scattering is not occurred. For example, <coughs> When the light ray travels through the air or any transparent medium, at that time so many particles are there. Some particles are very small, some particles are very big, like this. So, any small particle which influenced by the scattering, it requires the light wave which contains smaller wavelength or higher frequency, smaller wavelength or higher frequency. So, any particle which is big in size, bigger in size, at the time, if it influenced, if it influenced by the scattering of the light, means it requires higher wavelength, higher wavelength or less frequency of the light ray. So, scattering occurred when the wavelength of the light ray is comparable to the size of the particle. Small particles of the medium affected scattering by high frequency light waves or low 
wavelength light waves big particles affected scattering when the light rays have higher wavelength or less frequency so scattering is the one of the light phenomena when any light ray which comes from any light source passes through the any particle of the medium either free atom or free molecule at that time the wavelength of those light ray is comparable to the size of those particle those particle absorbs some light energy from that light wave and emits in all directions this phenomena is called scattering of the light so by using this phenomena we can explain the so many things which are uh, which are occurred in our nature why the sky is blue why the sky is sometimes why the sky appears white color in the morning and evening or sunset and sun, sun uh, at the time of morning or at the time of evening sun appeared in the red color why we are explaining by using this scattering of the light Sky appears blue. So generally, light, the light rays we get all the light rays from sun. All those light rays which comes from the sun travels through the air. At the time of traveling, the air contains more particles of more particles of nitrogen and oxygen. If the air contains more nitrogen particles. and more oxygen particles when the light is passing through these particles blue color emits in all directions because the way, the size of nitrogen and the size of oxygen particles are comparable to the blue color wavelength that's all blue color wavelength so so why the sky appears blue in color the light rays which comes from the sun while the traveling of this light rays through the nitrogen and oxygen particles in other words if the nitrogen and oxygen particles present more in the air at the time the light rays traveling through those particles those all those particles emits blue color because the wavelength of the blue color is comparable to the size of the nitrogen and oxygen particles so that at the time sky appears blue sky appears blue next why the sky appears white in the afternoon generally sky appears in the white in the afternoon times white color is a combination of seven colors we have already known that so what happens in the afternoon the temperatures increase the temperatures of the weather or the temperature of the climate is increasing because in the afternoon session the sun rays 
incident on the earth surface vertically so that the temperatures are increased when the temperature is increased the water molecules evaporates and reaches into its surrounding so that the water vapor molecules the presence of water vapor molecules increased in the air when the light rays travels through the those water vapor molecules what happened except blue remaining all other colors the wavelengths of all other colors comparable to the size of the water vapor molecules so that those water vapor molecules emits all colors in all directions except blue if all those colors mix together the sky appears in the blue color sky appears in the blue color next last one why the sun appears red at sunrise and sunset so at the time of sunrise and at the time of sunrise occurred in the morning sunset occurred in the evening in the west direction at the time if you observe the sun the color of the sun sun appears in the red color why we have already know that red color has higher wavelength so that it gets less deviation it gets less deviation and it doesn't get any scattering in the morning and evening at the time of sunrise and at the time of sunset the light rays traveling to the earth the time taken by the light rays traveling to the earth surface is more so that red color has a higher wavelength when those light rays traveling through the particles of the air or medium between sun and air except red color remaining all colors get more scattering so that all those colors doesn't reach our eye but the red color gets less scattering because the size of the particles which are existing between sun and between sun and earth surface is very low so that red color gets less scattering that's why red color reaches our eye in the morning at the time of sunset at the time of sunrise in the evening at the time of sunset so that at the time of sunrise and sunset the red the sun is appeared very red or sometimes orange because those light rays traveling more distance to reach the earth surface in the morning and evening remaining all colors get scattering because between the sun and earth surface the particles of the remaining colors in the vgr or spectrum series are available between earth and sun but the particles when the red color is scattered the wavelength of the red color is very high if the any light if the red color gets more scattering means it requires particle bigger size particles so that when the if the bigger particles existing in any medium at the time only red color gets more scattering but the, uh, that much of bigger particles are not available between the space between the space between sun and earth so the red color gets very very less scattering but except the red remaining colors in the vgr series gets more scattering so that all those colors vanish or doesn't reach to our eye due to less scattering red color reaches to the our eye so that in the morning or sunrise in the evening or sunset sun appears either red color sometimes in orange color due to less scattering okay